love our viewers. We love when you guys make comments, when you make requests. We love talking about some of these more obscure gemstones. That's what this video is about. If it's sulfur again, I'm gonna lose it. All right, guys, let's read the clue, open the box, and see what we have in store today. This mineral gets its name from the Greek word for heavy. Okay, so let's see which one it is. Oh my gosh. We have a lot of different looking specimens. Today we're talking about barite. Its name comes from the Greek baros or baris, meaning heavy due to its really high specific gravity. It has an SG of four and a half. So a lot of metals have high SGs. They're very dense. When you hold them in your hands, you can feel their heft. Barite has a high SG, but it's not a metal. So that makes it interesting. It's about a three to three and a half on the most scale of hardness. So not super hard. It's brittle. And so its durability is pretty low. It's in things like golf balls, traffic cones, obstacle glasses. One of my favorite uses is in the medical industry. So because of its density, it's impenetrable to x-ray radiation. Doctors use it to line the GI tract and because it's visible under x-ray, doctors can see if there are any anatomical deformities. Barite is found all over the world, Canada, in Australia, in the United States, in India, in Romania. So barite is an allochromatic stone, meaning that it gets its color from elements not part of its base chemical composition. These two pieces of jewelry are great examples of different colors that barite can come in. Typically, you'll see it as colorless or whitish or yellowish, but as you can see, it can also have blues, greens, pinks, peaches, yellows. This is barite on fluorite. So the fluorite part is this purplish, greenish part of this specimen. And then the barite, you can see, is this yellowish part. So barite has three planes of cleavage. They're all 90 degrees to each other, which again is part of what makes it a little bit less durable of a gemstone. Let's talk about this one. I think this is a beautiful specimen. It has a really pretty bourbony color to it. It's in like a prismatic, but somewhat also like tabular form. They have pretty parallel straight edges to the side of them. Barite is part of the orthorhombic crystal system. And when you look at these in cross section or down the length of the crystal, you can see it's like an off-center rectangle. And they're pretty clear from a clarity perspective. This barite is on calcite. You can see the crystals here are growing concurrently. There are probably one, two, three, four, five clear crystal forms that I can see there. Barite is often found in twinning formations. It can also be acicular, they can be tabular, they can be more prismatic. So a lot of different forms of barite, which again makes it really interesting. Okay guys, we have added three massive specimens to the table. And let me tell you, they are heavy. We're really seeing that high SG in action. Let's start with this specimen. So this is a desert rose. This specimen is from the United States, likely from Oklahoma. It looks pretty dehydrated. Again, barite can form in a lot of different habits. Uh, these rosettes are one of those, hence the name desert rose. They look like little flowers. That's a really fun piece again, very dense. These two specimens are from Kavnik, Romania. They look pretty similar. One of the common habits of barite are these bladed crystals, and there are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of bladed crystals on here. And so they're very thin, very sharp, a lot of them growing concurrently. A lot of them actually look twinned. They're going in many different directions. They're a really pretty colorless with a little bit of this cream to yellowish color to them. Again, there are three planes of cleavage on here. And so you can see they're very delicate. Because the cleavage planes, you can see some of like the terraced patterns or markings on the faces of the crystals. Barite from Kapnik, Romania is 
formed as part of the Carpathian mountain range there, which is actually a source of 36 different minerals. So it's definitely a mineralogically rich region of the world. Definitely special to have such amazing specimens come out of there. All right, so you guys know we love to take a closer look on this channel. I love this metal specimen. I think it, from an aesthetic perspective, it's gorgeous as a display piece. All these bladed crystals really <laughs> pack a punch with them. They look scary yet really inviting at the same time. I love the, the crystal clear nature and on the back of this piece, it has this really pretty natural beige matrix that it's on. So I want you guys to take a closer look at it. All right, guys, Brittany's coming up next with another viewer request. Take a look at some half forms this morn. All right, all right, all right. I know what this one is. So from the clue, which I believe most of it was an emphasis on half, this mineral is hemimorphite. So in 1853, Adolf Kengat was able to name this particular mineral because of its crystal habit, which is hemimorphic. So if you can see the bottom of this mineral specimen, and then when you compare it to the top, the bottom is the, the blades as it grows is a lot thinner. And then as it was growing upward, it slowly kind of like opened up. Besides its unique crystallographic habit, it is a part of the orthorhombic system. It's normally a secondary mineral deposit. It normally forms like above the zinc mineral deposits, but sometimes it can either like form as just like a crust to other zinc minerals or from the process of the fluids from metastomatism, those same fluids to kind of like take those mineral bits and kind of like bring them along together and so it can seep into like cracks. So hemomorphite can form in kind of like veins as in addition to the typical crusts that you'll find it on. So these bladed crystals aren't the only way hemomorphite can crystallize into. And I heard that there's another box that we can look into. All right, that's, you know, this, this is what I was hoping for. Here comes our blue boys. Oh, look at that color. All right, look at all of this blue. Oh, a couple of jewelry pieces here that I'm gonna put on myself. The blue of hemimorphite comes from a particular trace element of copper. Copper is one of like the main trace elements that colors a lot of other minerals. And when it does become a trace element in those minerals, most commonly it is blue, but it's also green. So when we're looking at these mineral specimens here, you can see a lot of the botry oidal habit that's on here, which is grape-like. So this lovely blue specimen here specifically came from the Wenshin mine in China, where there's only, I believe, two main deposits for this blue hemomorphite. And then this small one right here came from Italy. It is possible for some hemomorphite specimens to be too blue to be true. There were some specimens that came from the Oela mine in Mexico where they were actually dyed blue. So be a little careful when you're searching for this nice blue hemomorphite. Hemomorphite is another great mineral to add to your mineral collection. You can also get these lovely hemomorphite jewelry pieces from jtv.com. You can find jewelry pieces, you can find cabochons like this lovely blue one right here. And there's actually a lot of cool mineral specimens in general. I want you guys to take a closer look at this piece right here. has another viewer request for you guys to look at. We're unboxing another box today. Got a clue this time, let's see what we got. Do not inhale or ingest this vibrant mineral. If it's sulfur again, I'm gonna lose it. I'm walking out if I'm unboxing sulfur again. It's definitely not sulfur. Look at this blue color. 
That's insane. It doesn't even look like a real color that nature produced. I first thought of dioptase, which has a similarly vivid color, but based on the color and the formation, I'm going to say that this is cavensite. It's a really rare mineral, cavensite is, but this blue color is diagnostic pretty reliably. It can get a little bit greener than this, but usually if you see this color and this crystal formation, you can be pretty sure that you've got cavensite. Cavensite actually gets its name from its elemental components. The CA comes from calcium, the VA is vanadium, and the SI at the end is silica. So calcium, vanadium, and silica. Actually, the vanadium is what gives cavensite its color. Cavensite is idiochromatic, which means that one of the components of its chemical structure, namely vanadium, is not only inherent to the creation of cavensite, but it's also what gives it its color. So vanadium also colors a couple of different other gemstones, for example, tanzanite and emerald. Once you see past the brilliant color of this mineral, you get into the really explosive shape of the crystals themselves. There are like large spikes of cabin sites that are radiating out from this central point, but they're pretty lustrous as well, which is awesome because a mineral's hardness can often contribute greatly to how lustrous it will be, which is cool because cabin site is relatively soft. It's about a three and a half on the most hardness scale, which surprises me because there's a lot of light reflecting off of these guys. And imagine mining and pulling this thing out of the ground. I, I wouldn't believe my eyes. This is a very rare mineral. It only occurs in about five different places around the world. New Zealand, the USA, Brazil, Iceland, and India is the most abundant locale, a place called Pune. And these guys come from a locale called Wagoli. Now the clue makes sense. Cavensite is a little bit toxic. I'm gonna wash my hands after this just to err on the side of caution. You want to avoid inhaling it, like the clue said, or ingesting it. So don't eat cabin site, so I'm gonna wash my hands because I touch my face all the time. The worst you could do is grind it up and then accidentally inhale it. Inhaling airborne particles of cabin site can lead to silicosis, which is actually an incurable lung disease. So <laughs> just don't huff and puff too hard when you're around ground up cabin site. So that's it guys, it's time to wrap up. But as always, I gotta pick a specimen to take a closer look at. And I'm gonna go with this one because I think you've got more variety in the crystal formations, more different types of radial. Some of them look like explosions. Some of them are sort of cut in half and you can see the luster of them, as well as some of these really awesome still bite crystals. So let's take a closer look. All right, we've got a box and a glue. This unboxing is two years overdue. Oh my goodness, well let's hurry up and see what's inside. Okay, I know this guy. We love our viewers. Love when you guys make comments, when you make requests, that's what this video is about. We have a viewer, Gabrielle Hood, who has been asking for quite a while for us to feature Indigo Gabbro. This piece is from Tucson. Here is some spheres of indigo gabbro. So, Gabrielle, we are going to buy a specimen just for you. I picked out my favorite, so we're gonna go with this one. She told us a fun story that she and her husband have wedding rings made out of indigo gabbro with their names in it. Her husband's name is Jeffro, her name is Gabrielle, and so it's a fun combination of their names. So, this is indigo gabbro. It's found in Madagascar. This color is a prized color. It's particular to this region. Indigo gabbro is a combination of a lot of stuff. It's mostly quartz and feldspar. It can have chlorite, muscovite. You can see some metallic nature to it. It has this really pretty dark bluish grayish coloration. It's pretty heavy. The sphere is a good little workout for me. It's formed when magma is trapped beneath the earth's surface and it slowly cools and it becomes this great conglomeration of materials. It's also known as blizzard stone and mystic merlinite. It's not to be confused with merlinite which is a dendritic agate and is itself often confused with opal. A lot of metaphysical properties associated with this stone. Some people say that it balances your third eye, it aids in past life recall, and it protects you from psychic attacks. We don't really know about all that on this channel, but if you have had any of those experiences with Indigo Gabbro, let us know in the comments. Now let's take a closer look at this.
Gabrielle, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We're really glad to have featured it for you. We love talking about some of these more obscure gemstones. If you want to learn more, check out gemstones.com. Thank you to everyone who sends us viewer requests. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future episodes. Thanks for watching.